Hey, good afternoon, friends. It's uh, Lance Klessig. It is the 14th of June here, and we are out in a beautiful uh, cornfield uh, that has had cover crop uh, recently applied to it, cover crop seed. Uh, so wanted just to essentially bring you uh, part two of the interseeding uh, video series here. And so we are in a field, you can probably see it. This is wide row corn, 60 inch corn. Um, and to just give a little background here, so this is uh, Sheldon Lumen's farm, uh, part of our, our cover crop tour. Um, and 60 inch corn that was planted green. So let's, let me back up a little further actually. This farm uh, was uh, soybeans last year. The rye was uh, no-till planted. Um, I forget the date uh, and rate, but no-till planted. And then the corn was planted green this spring. Um, and just to give you an idea, this is 60 inch corn. So this, we have corn plants that are really stacked in here, right? Um, I think planting population, he told me was around 62,000 in row. Um, and final stand was closer to that. Um, was that 58,000? So uh, by the acre, that's about 29,000. Um, so yeah, so the history here is, um, Friday, last week Friday, uh, we were out here and he spun on. Um, the target rate was around 26 pounds of annual ryegrass and um, a little bit of clover and a little bit of, uh, I think, purple top turnip. And we were using a, um, a Kuhn, I think it's 20.2 model, like a, it was a 3.0 um, mounted spreader. Uh, you can actually, we did a video on that, so that would be essentially part one. Um, so we'll put that in the in the comments below. Um, and so that was Friday. Uh, we got a little heavy <laughs> trying to get that thing calibrated. Um, and so then, since then, Sheldon has been out, um, you know, using this tool, right? The rotary hoe. Um, and actually just want to point out, you know, there are some um, CRI plants here that escape the, the initial chemical termination. Uh, I should also add that this is a field that uh, is planted to conventional corn. So not able to use uh, Roundup out here. Uh, so yeah, seed was blown down um, and then he used rotary hoe, this rotary hoe, to stir up the soil, right? And <laughs> here you can see he found uh, some egg plastic. That's what happens sometimes. Um, and um, these shanks were actually all down when he did the 60. Um, and the reason we realized he had to modify them was because um, you know when, when the shanks were going through, let's see if I can demonstrate, basically they were you know bending the corn over and had started to snap some off. So this is the innovation, you know, tied up with, <laughs> with metal uh, wire or in this case use a <laughs> couple old fence posts. Um, so that you know that's what he's doing out here. Um, and when he was out here, kind of test running it, we were able to um, find some moisture down. Um, let's see if I can find some here. Um, where he, like in this example, where he flicked this up, right, um, there was moisture down about a half inch. So the idea is to get the seed covered. Um, really, really could use a rain. Uh, again, this is all planted green, no tilled. So we are conserving lots of moisture that way. Um, but Let's see if I can find some seeds. Um, let's see. So you have annual rye, annual rye. Here's some clover, clover, clover. Um, more clover, annual rye. So I think you get the picture. So th there's a pretty good amount of seed out here. Um, and so the idea is then to flick some of this soil and residue on top of the seed. And um, hopefully if we get a nice rain, it'll hatch, it'll germinate. Um, so um, that's the plan here. Um, objective wise, see the farmstead in the background here? That is uh, Sheldon's home farm. And there's a valley in between us here. And that valley um, is where Sheldon's grazing his cow calf pears. And so the thought is hey, let's, let's experiment with this. I think he did 12 or 14 acres of 60 inch corn. And then combine the corn. Yeah, we might have a little yield reduction or drag but yield isn't everything, right? Um, assuming this, we get a good rain and this catches, he'll have lots of biomass. And last year, I believe he told me um, 
he he did 30 inch interseeding last year and was really happy he grazed for about a month extra uh, which is tremendous uh, so this year he said if it catches maybe we get two months and so not having to feed any stored feed is is a is a big deal so so those are some of the objectives also um, you know stimulate the biology give them some habitat give them some food because now we have a diversity of of um, you know plant roots and exudates and sugars that we're putting out there because we have you know grass different cool season grasses and some you know legumes um, should also mention here too it might be kind of hard to see but um, here you can see the um, 30 inch rows so you know he's not just um, trying out 60s for the whole field he's got this broken down so he can check yield on you know the first four or five passes of the combine then he's got the 60s then he goes back to 30s so um, that's I really like that about you know if you're gonna try something uh, you know give it a whirl um, and, and make it a, a fair experiment um, let's see what else was I gonna add so yeah we're on one of our cover crop tours uh, locations it is I want to say site D but uh, don't hold me to that but we are just a couple miles north of Lewiston right on 25 uh, we have um, nine sites and we really have some awesome examples of innovation but also farmers that have had five ten even 20 years of experience and success with with cover crops um, so I'd encourage you if you're from southeast Minnesota or if you just want to make a day trip and you're watching this video come down and check it out um, we've got uh, Sheldon and his good friend Mike Unruh they did a bunch of roller crimping uh, into tall rye um, about a week and a half ago um, and so we did a video on that uh, like I said we did a video out here last week when Sheldon was uh, seeding um, so lots of neat things some guys that are, are double cropping uh, getting essentially three crops in um, two years you know corn silage triticale planted take the triticale for forage and then no-till plant beans um, yeah and it was really neat because we were able to the no-till farmer magazine came up and she was able to Julia was able to interview um, a couple different guys so um, just neat to be able to show what's what guys are trying what's working um, and I'm just gonna walk up here quickly um, so right up here we actually have a soybean field that was it was corn last year obviously you can see some of the the corn stalks and um, drilled or planted around 100 I think around 100 pounds really late actually um, I think the ground might have even been frozen um, so uh, so this, the cover crop is actually still still alive here it has not been terminated um, it will very soon uh, but you can see we've got uh, a couple trifoliates here um, and you know this this cover is doing a really good job of, of shading the ground right I mean could be better but it's it's compared to a, a conventionally tilled field um, this this is going to act as some really nice armor and and protect that soil um, especially on a year like this so we've been extremely dry i think we're six or maybe even eight inches behind what's considered normal um, and so yeah this 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 cover crop this mat will provide weed suppression because the sun can't get to the ground so it doesn't allow those weed seeds to germinate um, holds in the moisture keeps the soil biology alive and functioning um, just out uh, looking at some other fields that are, are clean tilled and those fields are getting hot you know we've been in the 90s for over a week and um, yeah when we get to a certain temperature we are starting to kill our our soil biology and the water that's in the soil profile is becoming basically not available um, because it's just getting so hot and so th there's tons of benefits of cover crops um, and so again we're just trying to showcase some of them um, and some of the innovation that guys are doing uh, like Sheldon and Mike and Everett um, Robin Luke Miller um, Bob Christie DJ Mueller uh, Ryan Olson <laughs> trying to get all you guys in there um, the dailies Ben Daly so um, yeah that's that's kind of the update i think there's just one other thing i was hoping to show you guys um i don't know if you can see this i'll try to get it in close but you see those holes 
probably hard to take up, but um, yeah, I mean, those holes not only allow air to get in the soil profile, but also water. And so, so often, um, you know, people say, well, I got a three inch rain. And I'll ask them, well, did you infiltrate three inches of rain? Because the truth is, is then when we do tillage, we break up, we break up all these pores, these conduits and these culverts. And, you know, um, water simply cannot get in very effectively to the tune of uh, most farms I visit, um, a half an inch or an inch of rain is all we can really effectively infiltrate. So I want you to noodle on that. Think about that as far as are you able to even infiltrate the rain that we've been blessed by, right? So we can take a farm like this that was conventionally tilled up to about three years ago or so, start going no-till using covers, and um, we can be up to three, four inches of rain per hour compared to where we were, where we're only getting half an inch to an inch. So some huge differences. Uh, Hopefully we get a good amount of rain here to get this seed hatched and germinated and coming. And stay tuned, we'll be bringing you uh, some other updates here through the growing season. And yeah, if you're in the area or want to make a trip, come on down. There's signs at each location, has all the farmers' phone numbers, and you can definitely reach out directly to them. Uh, I want to end by saying, if you like our videos, give us a, a thumbs up. And lastly, choose to make it a great day, friends.